Please be seated. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. This is a case of Lewis versus McAllister. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good morning. Mr. Lewis, you say you've always known the defendant is your father and say his paternity denials are mere excuses as to why he was not there for you. You hope today's results put an end to this 44-year-old mystery. Is that correct? Yes. Mr. McAllister, you claim that years of doubt have given you reason to believe that you are not his father, but you may know who is. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. You are ready to prove your case today. Mr. Lewis, how has Mr. McAllister's denial affected you? Well, growing up in South Central Los Angeles, you know, uh, it, it was tough not having a father there. You know, knowing that you have one, you know, um, just different things that went on through my life that, you know, not having a, a man there to, to answer different questions, you know, um, it, it made things a lot tough, a lot tougher for me coming up, you know, but thank God that everything worked out. So, Mr. McAllister, do you hear Mr. Lewis's testimony? Yes, I do. It was very difficult growing up knowing he had a dad, but that he was nowhere to be found. Yes, ma'am. Why is that? Were you doubtful all of these years? Yes, ma'am. And the reason why I was doubtful is because I heard maybe three or four different versions of who the dad was, and that put doubt in my mind. And um, I would just like to know before I leave here what the actual truth is. So, Mr. McAllister, can you tell the court what was the nature of your relationship with Mr. Lewis's mother? Me and uh, Miss Lewis, we had attended the uh, same high school together, and I knew her as, as a casual friend. However, the young lady that I was dating at the time, we either had our differences or whatever, and somehow me and my, uh, Mrs. Lewis hooked up for an evening. And um, <laughs> never talked to her from that point on. So, what did you hear about the relationship, Mr. Lewis? Well, well, my mom was, it, you know, because the type of woman she was, she didn't want to allow the turmoil from that fear, uh, interfere with my life. But as a what, woman, what we had to... What did she say specifically? She let me know who he was as a father. She had a picture of him. She gave me this picture, you know, with his, you know... So, was this some defining moment in your life when your mother said to you, I want to tell you who your father was, or was this always just... No, it was clear, yeah. It was Clearly. clear. It was clear, yeah. When, she, when I found out, yeah, when she told me. And so, when you got this picture and you had the name, and mm. did you ever say, I want to look for him? Where is he? Yeah, at that point in my life, I, I definitely wanted to know who he was. I was roughly probably a, a junior in high school. So, I had a lot of things going on that I had already made it that far without a father. So, I mean, it would have been nice to know who he was, but at that point, I still had business to take care of. So, it was... You know, it's kind of a bittersweet situation. I wanted to know, but I was kind of, you know, moving on with my so life. So, she gave you the picture of him when you were in high school? Yeah, at that point, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, Mr. McAllister, yes, all of this time, Mr. Lewis says it wasn't until high school that he even got a picture of you from his mother. Mm -hmm. All this time, you never knew you potentially had a son? No, ma'am. Um, I... I traveled, um, to Los Angeles back in 81 and I ran into a relative of the family. And this individual told me that um, their relative had my son. And um, I got the information and I called Mrs. Lewis and I asked her, do we need to talk about something? And she said, no. I said, what about your son? Um, what's, what's going on there? I, I heard X, Y. She said, his dad is dead. I said, his dad is dead. She said, yes, his dad is dead. So then, at that point, you figured the mystery had been solved. Maybe this family member was wrong. I do not have a son. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I also heard that it could have been my, my first cousin, Michael. And... Unfortunately, I don't know. I also heard that, um, as I said, that a family member told me that was someone from the location, um, the city that I stayed in. And then... I also heard from the mom that he died. So, those are four different, um, versions. So, as I said, before I leave here, I just felt that it's just important that I know for sure. Where are you getting all these versions from? Uh, the young lady that I was dating back during this time, she was the first one that brought it to my attention because she knew me very well. She knew I'm a accountable man. She knew what my... what my morals were. I used to look down on men that would not be supportive to their son. 
and for me to happen to could possibly fall into that category, that was something that I, I was not trying to do. And if, if that was the case, I wanted to correct that and, and make the best of it. And that's one of the reasons why me being a man, <laughs> trying to stand up. And you heard that Mr. Lewis's mother had potentially slept with your cousin Michael. That is correct. And Michael is deceased. Yes, ma'am. And so what's so fascinating is as I look at the court papers, I see that Mr. Lewis's full name is Jermaine Michael mm. Lewis. I never even looked at that like that. And Michael is your cousin's first name. That is correct. So, Mr. Lewis, I have to ask you, have you ever heard anything about Mr. McAllister's cousin or your mother potentially having a relationship with him? Never. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So, tell me about life growing up without a dad. I mean, you stand here now, mm -hmm. you are... Um, you know, such a respectful young man. Thank you. Uh, but mm -hmm. what was life like? It was it was tough, you know. And um, I mean, growing up, you know, I I, I uh, thank God I I uh, gravitated to football because there were opportunities to get into gangs. Being in South Central Los Angeles, um, my mother she protected me because I'm sure there was opportunities that she let him know. That's why. When she told him, and I don't, I'm not sure if she did say that, but I can see my mother, if she did say he was dead, it was to protect me. Because we had already moved. Things were, you know what I'm saying? When he didn't show up and do what he was supposed to do, and she knew that, she couldn't, she had to move forward. Single mother, you know what I'm saying? She had to do what she had to do. If a woman is pregnant, they would let the father know. She's never told me that she was pregnant by me. She's never told me that I was his father. To today, when I finally found out about that there was a possibility here, I reached out to him and I told him I was gonna be coming to um, Los Angeles and I would like to meet him. Me and my ex-wife was going on vacation. And we... How old was Jermaine then? He was 16 at the time. Okay. And um, we met and everything and, you know, I just wanted to get to know him. I wanted him to get to know me. Well, I have to ask you this. Why, if you were told definitively that his father had passed away mm -hmm. by his mother, why are you now making these gestures, trying to connect with this young man? Because of a credible friend of mine that I dated for years told me that there was a gentleman that was looking for me, saying that I was his father. And my thing is, whoever's looking for me that's saying that I'm their father, I need to talk to this person. So that's what I did. My thing is, again, before, I, like I said, before I leave here, within myself, I just need to know the truth. This is such a mystery. So at the point when his mother said his father's passed away, you move on. Right. Ten years later, someone you're dating and, and someone you trust, someone you, you know, you feel like yes, wouldn't Your lie to you, says, yes, Your there's a young man saying you're his father. Yes, Your Honor. So then you revisit this issue that you had put to bed for ten years because you thought the door was closed. However, directly to the son this time. The first time I reached out to the mom, the second time I find out that there's a young man looking for me, so I reached out directly to the son. So when he reaches out, Mr. Lewis, what do you think? What, do you remember that day? Yeah, I remember it. What happened? Take me back to that day. Um, it was bittersweet because I totally felt that he came around because things in my life were good. You know, me playing football, um, I had some scholarship offers. And it's like I heard more from him in that span than I had in the 18 years, 16 years of me living. So that's why things to me kind of seem fishy. Like all of a sudden, now that you see you have a son and he's doing well, now you're picking up the phone. Because like I say, where we're from, it's tough for us not to know who we're from. You know, it's, it's, it's really tough because it's such a small community, you know? And I believe in my heart, I know my mother wouldn't lie to me, you know, when she told me who he was. I'm sure he knew. That's why he didn't quit continuing to try. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then, since we, we go back with names, my brother's name is something Jermaine something, his son. So why would he name his son, middle name Jermaine, my name, if he didn't know? 
to hear from your witness. Please stand, ma'am. State your name for the court. Dominica McAllister, Your Honor. Ms. McAllister, what relationship are you to Mr. Lewis? That's my brother. I'm his sister. And you are also... Mr. Derrick's daughter. <laughs> Mr. McAllister's daughter. Yes. Tell me about the first time you met Mr. Lewis. I was very young, and Mr. Lewis was in town visiting. And I remember my father telling me that it was a cousin that was visiting. Um, initially, later after Mr. Lewis left and went back to L.A., my father sat me down and, and told me that that was my brother, and he wanted to know how I felt about having an older brother. Wow. Do you believe he's your brother? Absolutely, without you... a shadow of doubt. I don't have any doubt. All right. Your Honor. Thank you for your testimony. You may be seated. So, Mr. McAllister, if you had very real doubt, mm -hmm. Why would you sit your daughter down and say, this is your brother, you have a brother? Actually, Your Honor, in the beginning, when it was told to me after I got with Jermaine and he said I was the father, I accepted it. I, I just took ownership of it because I knew I had been with his mom one time. However, the rumors that was told to me by the mom never saying anything to me, and, and, and Jermaine is correct, that I named my son Jermaine. I, I named his middle initial Jermaine because I, I remember hearing that that was his name and I, and I didn't want to forget that name. However, as we... Wow! That's the reason why I named my son that. However, as... I mean, this is a 40-year deal here and the reason why I'm here today is because one of the times I had a conversation with Jermaine not long ago and he tells me, well, you know, the thing that hurts is a bitter pill that you don't think you're my dad. Now, I had never told him that. But once he put that out there, I couldn't lie. I said, yeah, I did, and I do have my doubts. And I never knew anything about a football scholarship or anything. He was 16 years old. The young lady only told me that he's a good young man and he's playing football. The rest of the stuff that he's saying, I had no idea. Oh, listen, I... And you know what, Mr. McAllister? The truth is, I, I can almost believe that. Absolutely. I mean... I mean, look, a football scholarship is really not going to do anything for you. Absolutely. So, I mean, but, but I do understand how this young man could have a completely different perspective as to Absolutely. what was going on and Absolutely. why you weren't around mm -hmm. than you did. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But look, you have four different stories that have been told to you. Absolutely. That's... In this courtroom, that's what doubt is made of. Mm -hmm. And the biggest part of that doubt is making that call. And his mother saying, his father's dead. Many people would have been like, well, I don't know why he's saying that, because his mother said that his father had passed Absolutely. away, so it's not me. So the fact that you then re-entered it makes the mystery... It's so layered. It, this is... It's truly fascinating. I think the only way we're really going to move forward and understand how we really got here is to get the results. Jerome, I'm ready for the results. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Lewis versus McAllister, when it comes to 44-year-old Jermaine Lewis, it has been determined by this court. Mr. McAllister, you are the father. Thank you, Your Honor. What are you feeling in this moment, sir? I feel grateful and gratitude that now I know the truth. If, if I had known he was my son, a fleet of elephants wouldn't have been able to keep me away from him. What do you feel, Mr. Lewis? Um, Can you tell your dad? I mean, it's, uh, I'm willing to do, you know, whatever it takes, we can definitely try to make it work, you know, but uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a different person because of my situation, you know, Absolutely. what I've been through. So. 
And uh, I can't apologize for that, you know, from what I've been through. Oh, you have no, as, you know? as far as I'm concerned, you have no apology. You were the innocent person. There's nothing for you to apologize to right. about. I have to say this before we go. I want you to understand, because I, I, I feel the wall that you've put up, and I see why you did it. You know, I say this all the time. You either become the father you never had or you become the father you never had. Right. Mm -hmm. And you became that father you never had. Right. And Mr. McAllister, I want you to understand that these walls that Mr. Lewis has built, they're for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Understandable reasons. I know that he's my son now. Good and I'll be consistent with him as my son. That's what we want to hear. And we have counseling and resources for you. We hope that you all will start the process of getting to know one another and connecting as family with the entire family. And we wish you the very, very best. Dr. Jeff is waiting for you all. I hope you open up and really talk about what this means to you and how you take those first steps with courage and commitment. All right? Thank you very much, Jeff. Court is adjourned.